welcome to Successful Philanthropy. Hello, I'm Jean Shafiroff, your host. This show is designed to showcase leaders on the eastern end of Long Island and beyond, leaders in philanthropy. And what is philanthropy exactly? Well, philanthropy is the love of mankind. And who can be a philanthropist? Simply put, any one of us can be a philanthropist by giving our time, our knowledge, and then our available resources. With me today are two wonderful women doing tremendous good on the eastern end of Long Island. We have Andrea Grover, who is the executive director of Guild Hall, and then I have with us um, Anne Chasson, who is the executive director of the Hamptons Film Festival. And today's subject specifically is going to be all about art and the artists who are now in need because of the COVID-19 pandemic. As all of you know, this pandemic has affected just about every single person on this earth. With over 40 million people out of work at one point this past spring in the United States, there is great need and our artists are in that category. So specifically, we're going to speak about the Hamptons Arts Network and what they are doing to help out artists in need. And Andrea, can you tell me a little bit about the Hamptons Arts Network and exactly what you're doing for young artists or older artists who maybe now are, are in a great pinch because of this a pandemic. Mm -hmm. Sure. The Hamptons Arts Network is a consortium of 19 different arts and cultural organizations on the east end of Long Island and we work together all year round and now it's been about four years that we've been uh, meeting monthly. We started meeting weekly and we quickly during the pandemic identified the fact that many artists were going to be losing the opportunities that they had planned for for some time with the cancellation of many programs music gigs, performances, and paid opportunities. Mm -hmm. So we banded together and we created the Hamptons Arts Network Artist Relief Fund. So an, a relief fund meaning something where you're raising money and then you're going to give this money out to different artists in need. Yes. And that's wonderful. Yes, I think that's fantastic. That's right. And it's going to visual artists, performing artists, filmmakers, literary artists, choreographers, composers, and teaching artists. What about dancers? Absolutely. So um, I'm an artist. Just yes. Let's just say I'm an artist. <laughs> okay. And I'm, I'm having a tough time right now because of this pandemic. Mm -hmm. And I'm, I'm having trouble buying food. I'm, I'm having trouble paying my bills. How much would you give me if I apply and I qualify? Well, they, it's a flat fund. The fund is an award of $1,000 per recipient. And so far we've raised over $175,000. And by we, I really mean two artists who spearheaded this for us, Clifford Ross and Eric Fischel. They gave nice. the initial gifts. They then asked patrons and other artists, peers of theirs to contribute as well. So it's really about artists helping artists. And if the fund goes really well, we could have a second round of awards. But right now it's $1,000 cash to each artist who is awarded. And uh, just quickly, um, when is there a deadline? Yes. A deadline to give yes, and so then a deadline to um, get involved and, and, and get a grant. Yes. You have to, I assume you have to put, out, put in an application, right. correct? That's correct. So the application is very humane. It takes less than an hour to fill out. We don't ask for a lot of personal information. Just demonstration that you've had loss of opportunity and loss of income. That could be an email that's forwarded. It could be a letter on letterhead from someone who was planning to have you play at their venue and that was canceled. So um, gifts can be given via NIFA, which is our administrator for the fund. NIFA stands for the New York Foundation for the Arts and that is NIFA.org where gifts can be made. Um, and then to apply, it's the same uh, location. You can also go to the HamptonsArtsNetwork.org to find out more information. So now tell me a little bit about this um, Hamptons Arts Network. Mm -hmm. And sure. maybe you can tell me a little bit about Absolutely. it. Because I went on your website and I said, what an interesting thing, this group of 
all these different art centers coming together to share ideas, I assume, and to work together rather than to compete with one another. And I think that's really a great thing. And but. Can you sure. explain a little bit more about it? Well, initially, um, four years ago, a, a couple of people said, let's get together and have a drink and talk to each other and get to know each other a little bit more, um, which we did, and then realized that we had a lot to share for each other as a resource, as running a nonprofit mm -hmm. organization. Um, out here, uh, you know, there's a slow season, there's a high season, and we all wanted to be able to talk to each other and help each other and help the community and help economic development around this area on the times where it was slow. So it started off as a, a meet and greet, and then it became a, a monthly call where uh, we would share everything from, you know, finding staff or uh, budgetary issues or trying to amortize different costs that we all have together and looking at those resources and many of us are from all over the country and have additional resources where those of us who run nonprofits can actually go to get information so it became an important thing for all of us it was, a, it was like a lifeline support uh, during a slow season, a slow time, and so the whole idea was for us to get together to create an event that would happen in March, which we've done mm -hmm. three times, four yes. times, three times now. Three times, we yes. did have it this month, this March. Um, everyone shut down right after. Uh, it was called Thaw Fest, the Hamptons Arts Weekend. Nice. And, uh, and you, it happened in March every year. And so year. you all worked together, collaborated together, because, you know, in philanthropy, so many times there's this group over here, say, doing something for the arts, and this group here, and this group here, and they don't know, they don't work together. But you founded, or this group was founded, uh, to come together and work together, and then to create an event together. I like that. I think that's very, very important. And yes. so how have these events been? Uh, how have they done? How have they worked? And, and has everyone worked together? Yes, well, what we tried to do was create um, a, a weekend where each of our institutions would create an event of some sort. So the idea was bring people out to the Hamptons to take a trolley and go around to each of the organizations and experience something at each person's organization, something that they do normally uh, that may have already been in the calendar, but perhaps the people coming to visit um, didn't understand how much is actually out here. We're culturally rich out here. This area is just rife with art institutions and performing arts and film, et cetera. And uh, those of us who live here, like yourself, know how oh, yeah, rich it is. It. But we want rich in culture. But we wanted to make sure that people would come out, even in the off season, because all of this cultural influx can happen all year round. We wanted to help hotels, we wanted to help the restaurants, we wanted to bring more people here, not just in the summer high season, but also in the, in the winter. Right, and then for the people that live here full time, because we, we are in a community where, um, of course, we have a big a summer population, but then the people that live here year round, um, they, they make the Hamptons what the Hamptons are today. And then, of course, our artists and our our groups like you make the whole place interesting because if a if you're in a community that's culturally void it's not interesting you don't want to live there there's nothing to do you know the beach is nice the restaurants are great but people also want to be enriched uh, through the arts and so now Andrea um, can you talk a little bit about Guildhall? What's going on this summer um, with um, the pandemic? So many institutions have had to close their doors. Did mm -hmm. you close your doors? And have you opened up to the public? What are you doing exactly? Yeah. And what, what's going on exactly? Yeah, I'm, I'm actually very proud to say that though we did close the physical space of Guildhall for just over four months, we never ceased continuing delivering on our mission. 
So we had programming almost instantly converted to an online platform. So those were staged readings. We created, we had local artists create workshops at home that they could do with their children and people could follow along. Um, we had, um, a, we created a huge list of resources for artists and people in the community, not only um, artists kind of relief funds like the one we created, but also um, programming that was being made for free at other institutions like the Metropolitan Opera. Mm -hmm. and, I saw that, yes. Yes, and, and National Theater Live. So we, the team never stopped producing content for our audience and delivering on mission. Our doors were shuttered for health and safety reasons, but we continued to work really tirelessly to produce programming, including this. Um, we did a, an online staged reading of Same Time Next Year by Bernard Slade, and that was starring Julianne Moore and Alec Baldwin, and it was Fun. a fundraiser <laughs> for Guildhall, very successful. It was spearheaded by the actor Bob Balaban, who is also on our board. Mm -hmm. And um, it's still actually streaming online now. So we, we took a step into on-demand video and produced yes. content uh, now, that could be paid. Um, I was in conversation with the Parish Art Museum, and I was told that their um, audience, because of all this online streaming, is now international, whereas before yes. it was more local and then New York. Has that happened to Guildhall as yes, well? Or yes, and is, I should mention which, that. Um, which is amazing. So your outreach is now international, and you're, you're available to everybody. And, you know, through this terrible pandemic, a few good things have happened. And this is just one example mm -hmm. where um, the arts and institutions have now made their programming available to uh, people all around the world, which I think is fantastic. And so, um, we have, so we have at Guildhall, this is exactly right, and I should mention that Parish Art Museum is a member of the Hamptons Arts Network. Mm -hmm. Yes. Um, we have 360 seats in our house, in our John Drew Theater. But online, we can have thousands of audience members, and just like the Parish reported, we have people viewing in Canada, all across the states. In, we had someone as far off as the Philippines watching our programming because we also had the live chat open and they were greeting, you know, introducing each other. So it really, it's kind of a breakthrough, to be honest. Um, there is a silver lining to this in that all of these wonderful things that happen in our small theater can now be seen potentially on a global level. Which is really fantastic, yeah. and mm -hmm. you know, when when you think of the Hamptons and you think of the arts, you think generally of, you think of the Parish Art Museum, and then you think of Guildhall, and then you you think of the Southampton Arts Center, and you think of the Hamptons Film Festival, and uh, you add so much to the cultural landscape. You have no idea, and. Because people, especially now, um, are really looking for things. And I remember just at the start of this pandemic when my family of six people and five rescue dogs, we, um, we came together at our home in uh, Southampton to live. Um, it was a very, it was a tough time. As a mother, the bonding was extraordinary to be able to live with uh, my two grown daughters and then a boyfriend of one of the daughters and, and my husband and to spend all this time together but um, it was also a sad time and I thank Netflix mm -hmm. <laughs> and their their programming for keeping me more more positive because it was a very rough time I remember going to sleep and thinking at night well we may not make it all of us may be dead and moving forward, we don't know if we're going to have a second round of this pandemic. But coming back to the arts now, um, so that so exactly now, what's going on? Is that theater open, or is the theater still closed? Can you tell us a little uh, bit about the yes. theater and and what you're doing? That's all indoors, mm -hmm. and you mentioned 375 right. people. Well, how do you social distance in a theater? Well, theaters are not open, and as we know, Broadway is closed, and most theaters around the world are, are shuttered at this point. So we had to reinvent our theater. We moved it outside. So instead of the John Drew Theater, it's the John Drew Backyard Theater. <laughs> so in August, we will be opening up 
the backyard, the Furman Garden in behind the mm -hmm. building, and we'll be having small, very intimate concerts, uh, staged readings, live music. I love it. And and puppet shows um, for the children. For the children, Wonderful. yes. So it's um, it's taking things to a very different scale and maybe a more meaningful scale, but putting things outdoors where people will feel safe and comfortable and maybe also get offline for a while, you know, sit on the grass, enjoy like the smell of the summer season and and just be in proximity to other people, but without it being crowded. Mm -hmm. So the, we're gonna have everyone safe distanced. We're following all of the New York State guidelines. And um, that program for the John Drew Theater will start at the beginning of August. August 1st. Yes, our museum, however, has been open since the middle of July, and we're actually very fortunate that it was open during phase two. Um, and so now how many people do you let into the museum at any one given time? Maximum of 30 people. It's and so do you have to make an appointment? We ask people to make appointments, but if we're not full, we will allow walk-ins. Fabulous. Everyone's required mm -hmm. to wear a mask and keep and social a distance. six foot distance. <laughs> and there's one way direction around the gallery. Their hand sanitizer placed throughout. And we close the building for an hour during the day to disinfect everything. All the doors are open, so you don't have to push on a door. We really have gone through to every measure possible to make it a safe environment. Nice, nice. Yeah. Now, um, I'm Jean Shafroff, and you are watching Successful Philanthropy. And with me today is the Chief Executive Officer, Andrea Groover of Guildhall, and, and also um, Anne Ch Chasson of the Hamptons Film Festival. And and I want to ask you, what's going to happen in October? <laughs> Your film festival is something that we all look forward to. I know for years and years we never came out here in October, my husband and I. And then <laughs> I remember Ed Pressman, a friend, he's an independent film producer. He had mm -hmm. a film in, in your festival many years ago. And we, we started coming out. And I just love the, the film festival. What are you going to do this year? Can you still do it inside theaters, or are you moving outside? What, tell, us, What's tell us what we have to look forward to. Well, to back up just for one second, as every institution has had to do, you know, we're a, a year-round organization, and so we immediately did programming online just like everyone else. We're wonderfully lucky. Um, we, we share Alec Baldwin in common with lots of our programming, but um, he's, well, we the all co -chair. he's the co-chair <laughs> of our um, uh, of our organization, and we had been recording all conversations that we've done with the film festival for 28 years. Well, this is our 28th year, so for 27 years, but we also record conversations that um, aren't Alec and other people, and any anytime we've had anyone on a stage that did a conversation um, with a critic or anyone else, we've recorded them. Um, Guild Hall and the Hamptons Film do partner on a, a program called Summer Docs that Alec spearheaded 12 years ago. So many of those programs were recorded as well. So we immediately started to put those online weekly. Alec would do an intro on his cell mm -hmm. phone and talk about why we had programmed the film and why we should, why someone should watch it, and then you could go on and then go and watch the movie on your own, and then go watch the conversation after. So we did that for many weeks, and then started to do all of the conversations that we had during the film festival. So I think we still have like 70 other recorded things that we haven't actually even put online yet. So we were very happy to be able to do that. We also started doing virtual screenings of uh, movies that were just coming out. Uh, like many institutions around the country, art houses and other people um, started to show films and you could uh, uh, sign up for it and pay for it. You so, pay for it. So if I want to yes. see a film, a new film, I can go on your website. Right. And, and how much does that cost? You know, it depends on the distributor. The distributor mm -hmm. sets so it's different. the fee. What's but great it's not about a crazy coming price, to the right? institution? No, six ninety nine to okay. twelve ninety nine. Okay, so something it's affordable like for a family if they yeah. want to see a movie at home, and they yeah. get on the computer and they can all watch you can together come to us instead of Netflix. No, <laughs> <laughs> but the great thing about that is, is that half of that fee will go to the nonprofit organization, which is which the key. Is, so supporting so you the organization you love. your operations exactly. and, and move forward. And what about this drive-in 
Yes, that I've so, been re hearing and reading about yeah. at the Hayground School. Yes, I haven't gone. I don't see my husband and I sitting in a drive-in movie theater somehow. Maybe when we first met, yes, but <laughs> we've been married a long time. I love him dearly, but I, I don't see us sitting there. But I, I, I'm intrigued with it's these drive-ins. It's been fascinating, actually. We were, we were showing only in July. We are only showing in July, Monday, Wednesday, and Friday. And we've shown everything from an extremely serious documentary to a scary movie like Relic, which was a new movie, um, and on to the classics like Wizard of Oz or Mean Girls. The Parent Trap is tonight, as a matter of fact. Um, oh, fine. And uh, <laughs> we're also showing another summer doc on Friday, um, and Alec will do a conversation after. But we've seen people with babies on up to in their 90s. Some people come in convertibles so and socially distanced. <laughs> some people love the throwback um, effect of it all, and some people have never experienced a drive-in at all. So. It's beautiful. There's most days, there's a gorgeous sunset. It's right there in Bridgehampton. And then, like magic, the movie appears when it gets dark enough. And uh, we talk to everyone. You listen to it on your FM transmitter, just right in your car, on your radio dial. And you have a lovely movie That's evening. Very cool. But now, the, are they sold out, generally, these nights? Well, of well some of them, yes, they are. Mm -hmm. There is a limit to the number of cars that can mm -hmm. fit in the area, plus we still need to be socially mm -hmm. distanced just like everyone else. So um, there are rules and regulations. People wear masks, uh, the, whole, the whole bit. So, But the so great then, thing okay. is that we're going to continue that new tradition that we just did in July uh, for the film festival. There aren't any theaters open out here. New York State still does not allow anyone to sure. go in a movie theater. Mm -hmm. And honestly, uh, we, need to, we need to make decisions and we need to move forward and we need to prepare. So we will be a virtual film festival as uh, well as a drive-in film oh, festival. Oh, so that weekend if we come out here, then my husband maybe by then will <laughs> we'll be going to drive-in movie theaters. Or you can watch the films virtually. Yeah. Yeah, but it's, in your own the home. idea of a drive-in is, is so cute and it's so much fun and I can think of all that popcorn, eating popcorn and candy <laughs> in the car and and seeing friends you know and um, it's a wonderful thing. I think, you know, despite this horrible, horrible time we're living through, um, we've seen our governor and our uh, political leaders help us get through this and and I'm so grateful for the arts and for all that the arts have done to help all of us get through this because, you know, the movies and, and, and then museums, they keep us alive and uh, we need a break. People need a break from work. They need a break from um, the day-to-day they may love their family, but when you, yeah. when you get involved with the arts, you escape. And right now, I think everyone would agree that we all need to escape. We all need an, a way to escape and to maybe fantasize a little bit about a different life. Like, none of us can travel now, but if we watch a movie, well, we feel like we're in the south of France, so we feel like we're on a yacht. Um, I'll never own a yacht. But it's nice to pretend. And mm -hmm. so if I watch a great film, well, I feel like I'm on a yacht. And then, and then with this spectacular art in the museums, every time I go to a museum, I feel like I transcend to another place because you see how another individual views the world. And it's, to me, it's a very spiritual experience. So on that note, I think that um, we have um, ways that people can help out. And I think part of philanthropy is to realize that if you don't have um, the funds to give to write a big check, you can volunteer your time. And so without going into detail, would you please, um, Andrea, give the website for a guild hall, how someone can mm -hmm. volunteer sure. their time, and then how they can write a, a small check or a large check mm -hmm. or get involved, because it's very important. And then, um, Anne, you do the same for the Hampton Film Festival. Sure. So, and thank you for being with us. And of what course. is the um, website for a guild hall? So it's guildhall.org, and we have lots of different ways that you can support us, from a simple membership to a larger donation, and you can designate it for the museum, 
the theater, our education program, or any, any combination of Nice. Those and before mm -hmm. we run out of time for the Hamptons Film Festival, sure. how can people donate to that? Yes. Uh, our website is hamptonsfilm.org. And we, as well, um, have a membership program and a patronage and um, buying a pass to the festival, renting one movie. You can support us in a hundred different ways. Wonderful. And designate as well. This concludes Successful Philanthropy, all about the arts this week. Thank you very much for tuning in. And remember, each and every one of us can be a philanthropist. We all have something to give. We have our knowledge. We have our time. And of course, we have our available resources. So thank you, and see you next week.